So how is this pure tone audiometry plotted? Okay, so let's take it one by one. First, let's take normal hearing. I'm taking the right ear. In normal hearing, basically what we are seeing is that the air conduction and bone conduction are both equally performing. Normally, air conduction is better than bone conduction, but the air bone gap will not be more than 15 to 20 decibel, which means that the air conductive pathway, which is through the ear canal, eardrum and ossicular pathway, and the bone conduction pathway will have a gap of less than 20 decibel with air conduction being better than bone conduction. So air conduction on the right side, maybe somebody is hearing, you know, really good. All right. So how is this graph plotting against? This is the frequencies going from low frequency to high frequency. And this is volume, which is decibel hearing level, not decibel hearing loss, decibel hearing level going from low volume to high volume so the difference here is this is the volume and this is the which of the frequency okay so this is the pitch this is not the volume this is the volume part low volume to high volume which is in decibels hearing level this is in hertz low frequency 128 hertz to 8000 hertz okay very high frequency so we are plotting against it and we are asking the patient what is the least that they can hear it's a threshold test so we are asking, giving the patient different sounds so first the examiner will give a sound at 40 decibel patient will say i can hear then they will say okay 30 decibel can you hear yeah 20 decibel can you hear yeah 10 decibel can you hear yeah less than 10 decibel can you hear no then they will plot it at 10 decibel it is a threshold as a karke her frequency may they will do air conduction then they will repeat the same thing with bone conduction which is shown by dotted lines this is a right side normal hearing level where you can see that the normal hearing level is anything that we see above this 30 decibel area right anything above this if we see 25 to 30 decibels ke andar jo bhi hai, we consider it as normal you can see the airborne gap is also normal so we consider this as a normal hearing test normal hearing for the right side if i have to do the same thing for the left side it will overlap so what people do is either they make a new graph and share or isi ke upar, they will do the blue line also x means without masking and then the box will be with masking right and then you will be able to say that now the bilateral left also is normal hearing loss so this is bilaterally normal hearing loss right so this is how a pure tone audiometry in a normal scenario looks now for di disorders i will just use the example of right ear okay because nahi to ye graph dikhne mein confusing ho jayega but you just have to apply the same logic to the left side also all right so let us say if there is conductive hearing loss what will happen in conductive hearing loss you will see that the air conduction pathway um, you have to understand in conductive hearing loss bone conduction becomes better than air conduction Barabar? that's what happens in your tuning folk test because the problem is in the conductive pathway not in the direct cochlear stimulation when you place the tuning fork or the sound vibrator on the mastoid by directly triggering the cochlea or the inner ear hearing system that is intact but the ossicles the eardrum the there is a canal something is blocking that area that's why the air, bone conduction becomes better than air conduction same thing will reflect in the pure tone audiometry where the bone conduction will be like normal But the air conduction component, there will this gap between AB will be more than 20 decibels. Minimum is 15 decibels as per some books. But if the airborne gap is more than 20 decibels, either 10 say 50, so there is almost a 40 decibel airborne gap is indicative of conductive hearing loss this would come under mild conductive hearing loss which would mean that wax or something like that because it is coming in this thing uh, in just below the normal but if this same thing we were seeing maybe shifted over here this would be moderate to severe conductive hearing loss which means some eardrum rupture and ossicular disease if it is even more lower and severe then that means there is some 
cholesteatoma there is some inner uh, you know ear involvement and there is you know more severe disease like that so this is conductive hearing loss sensorineural hearing loss you will see that there is hearing loss the threshold shifts but the airborne gap will be less than 20 decibels at all points of time but here the air conduction will be better than bone conduction when it is purely a cochlear function so in conductive hearing loss the bone conduction will always be up bone conduction line will always be up in conductive hearing loss but in sensory neural hearing loss again air conduction line will be above the bone conduction line okay because air conduction is better than bone conduction in a sensory neural hearing loss you will see that the air conduction pathway is dipping along with it the bone conduction pathway is also dipping it will always be with dotted lines this is a sloping sensory neural hearing loss which we see in a condition called as press by acusis which is age related hearing loss you will see this dip and at all points of times you will see that this airborne gap is less than 20 decibels all right so this is right side sensory neural hearing loss sloping hearing loss isko bolte hai, which is seen in press biocuses or in aging now the same situation if you see that for some part there is sensory neural hearing loss Now here's an interesting thing that you're seeing. You are seeing airborne gap of more than 20 decibels in the lower frequency range, but you are seeing a airborne gap of less than 20 decibels in the high frequency range. So what is this? This becomes a mixed hearing loss, which means you are seeing bone conductive conductive component and a air conductive sorry the sensory neural path where you here's the bone conductive and here is the uh, what do you say um, the sensory neural path uh, both being shown the hearing loss is down see the hearing loss is this is normal right so you can see conductive component is also below the normal hearing threshold and the sensory neural component is also below the normal uh, hearing threshold very commonly seen in cholesteatomatous disease where there is ossicular destruction as well as inner ear disease spread impacting both the air conductive pathway and the bone conductive pathway okay bone conductive pathway the sensory neural hearing loss air conduction pathway is the your ossicular pathway right and that's why this air bone gap will be wide over here air bone gap is narrow over here and this is in mixed hearing loss so you've understood normal hearing above the hearing threshold of 25 30 decibels you will see both the air and bone conduction pathway going together air conduction being better than bone conduction and airborne gap being less than 20 decibel in pure conductive hearing loss you will see bone conduction is better than air conduction airborne gap is more than 20 decibel sensory neural hearing loss you will again see air conduction better than bone conduction airborne gap less than 20 decibel but total dip in the frequencies right and if you see some part conductive and some part it is uh, you know the sensory neural hearing loss then you will see it is mixed kind of hearing loss which is typically seen in cholesteatoma. Now there are certain classical tympanograms that you have to see. Now I use a new word tympanogram. So this is pure tone audiometry. Pure tone audiometry is the name of the test and audiogram is the name of this report. Similarly tympanogram is the name of this report. The gram is this graph tympanograph or audiometric graph all right so audiometry is a test audiogram is this report now there are certain classical things that the examiners will ask you one thing you have to see is the 2k and the other thing which is important is that 4k we have two dips there are two dips in hearing that we have to make a note of which come very classically in certain conditions so now if there is you see that the air conduction is all right, all right, but the bone conduction the bone conduction is classically dipping 
at the 2K level. Only bone conduction, not the air conduction. This is called as the Carhartt's notch. And this is seen in otosclerosis. Because the fixed stapes, the stapes foot plate vibrates the most at 2K Hertz. So normal hearing frequency is from 512 to 2K. This is the range where most of our frequencies and at 2K Hertz, our ossicular movements or the stapes movement maximizes. That's why the biggest airborne gap of more than 20 decibel is seen only at the 2K dip. And that's why that is seen very classical of otosclerosis and this is a conductive type of hearing loss which is showing a 2k dip only in the bone conduction pathway this is very important not in the air conduction pathway but if both the air and bone conduction let us say both the air and bone conduction let us say this may is my problem nahi hai, the bone conductor pathway mein. okay let's say this 2k notch also does not happen now we see now here you are seeing that at the 4k you are seeing a dip in both air conduction and bone conduction this is very typical of noise induced hearing loss This is a sensory neural hearing loss, right? And here you are seeing both air conduction plus bone conduction dipping at 4K where there is maximum sound damage when you listen to headphones, when you listen to loud music, crackers. This is the level where the inner ear is damaged the most at this frequency in the cochlear modulus. The 4K uh, part of 4K Hertz part frequency is most damaged and that's why you will see the dip at this in noise induced hearing loss so both the dips are important only bone conduction dip at 2k is otosclerosis or the carats notch but air conduction bone conduction both dipping at 4k is a sign of noise induced hearing loss if you see the entire sensory neural hearing loss going down like this that is pressed biochesis age related hearing loss where we call as a sloping downward sloping frequency uh, of hearing loss but in some cases you can see an upward sloping which is also an important question that is asked in an important clinical condition where you will see that the hearing is getting better in higher frequencies opposite of press biochesis that means at lower frequencies there is a problem but higher frequency there is a not not a problem this is seen in early menias disease See, Menias disease mein kya hota hai? the cochlea, the, the three chambers that are there, you know, the scala vestibuli, scala tympani and the scala media. There is increased pressure in the scala media, right? So what happens is because of the increased pressure in that area inside the cochlea, there is less conduction of sound because of stretching of the membranes and damage. Now you see that as this cochlea becomes comes over here to the tip, this is the place where these spaces are the most narrowest, right? It's called endolymphatic high drops, which is the endolymphatic area where the pressure is very high. Okay, Menias disease we will study later, but it is called endolymphatic high drops. Scala media mein, there is increased pressure. Now you can see as this is turning, there will be of course most space here and the least space at the tip. And the tip is what carries low frequency sounds. Right, because low frequency sounds will travel the most, high frequency sound will travel the least. We have already studied that in tuning fork. So high frequency sounds will always be there in the uh, this thing, base of the cochlea. Base of the cochlea will always give you high frequency hearing loss problems. That's why 4K dip and all of this happens or press biochemistry happens in aging because of this immediate damage. Whereas in Menias disease, the least space is there at the tip. That's why the pressure changes are shown there first. So, and this tip carries low frequency. So you will have low frequency hearing loss first and then it gets better with higher frequencies. Note this is only seen in early mini years. In late mini years, 
you will see a downward dip just like press by acusis. But in early mini years, you will see an upward sloping. This is called upward sloping sensory neural hearing loss. You'll see that the airborne gap is less than 20 decibels. All right, guys. So the important audiomet grams to remember is the normal one, which you know, airborne gap is together, conductive hearing loss, airborne gap more than 20 decibel, sensory neural hearing loss, the sloping will be there. The frequency will be, I mean, at a higher frequency or lower frequency, but it will be below the hearing threshold, but airborne gap will be less than 20 decibel. If it is mixed, you will see conductive component and sensorineural component like in cholesteatoma. And then two important dips. 2K dip of pure bone conduction is Carhartt's notch in otosclerosis. 4K dip of air conduction and bone conduction seen in noise induced hearing loss. Upward sloping is seen in early mini years, sensorineural hearing loss and downward sloping is seen in age related press by acusis. With this, most of the permutation combinations of the clinical conditions you can answer. Remember the signs, the logic of the symbols, airborne gap and this is pretty, pretty straightforward and always one or two questions come from this even in your theory exams, even in your MCQs and even in your VIVAS. So I hope you will have no confusion with Pyoton audiometry uh, going forward. There's one extra question which you know you should answer sometimes which I don't know if you have asked or not. Why is there minus 10? All right. मतलब क्या आदमी जो आवाज नहीं हो रही वो भी सुनाई दे रहा है क्या सो माइनस टेन मोस्ट प्योटोन ऑडियोमेट्रीज विल स्टार्ट एट माइनस टेन फॉर टू रीजन वन इज सम पीपल हैव सुपीरियर हियरिंग एंड माइनस टेन मीन द पेशेंट इज एबल टू हियर टेन डेसिबल बेटर देन वॉट इज कंसिडर्ड एज नॉर्मल हियरिंग थ्रेश होल्ड जस्ट लाइक सम पीपल हैव अ बेटर विजुअल एक्विटी सम पीपल कैन हैव अ बेटर हियरिंग थ्रेश होल्ड विच इज मोर देन नॉर्मल एंड फॉर दोज पीपल द प्लॉटिंग इज एट माइनस 10 decibel hearing levels. Also, when some people have tinnitus, then you're not giving any sound and the patient is saying they're hearing a sound. Sometimes they map it into the minus 10. So that is the reason why the pure tone audiometry starts at minus 10 because that means that individual is able to hear 10 decibel better than the normal hearing threshold and has superior hearing levels. All right. So guys, pure tone audiometry for you. I hope this is a made simplified for you and you will be able to answer all questions in pure tone audiometry. Signing out, Dr. Jagdish Chaturvedi.